World War II, a time the world remembers for fire, chaos, and unimaginable loss. It took millions of lives. But what many people don't realize is that not all of these deaths were caused by bullets or bombs. A huge number were claimed by something silent, infections. It's estimated that two to three million soldiers died, not because their wounds were fatal, but because of the infection that followed them. Back then, the available antiseptics were harsh, painful, and often damaged the very people they were trying to save. Nothing truly stopped the infections. Doctors could only clean, pray, and hope. And then, history shifted because of a tiny accident. In a quiet laboratory at St. Mary's Hospital in London, a Scottish bacteriologist named Alexander Fleming returned from a holiday to find a petri dish he had forgotten to clean. On it, bacteria should have been spreading, but instead, he saw a patch of blue-green mold and a clear zone around it, a circle where bacteria have completely stopped growing. This is because the mold was releasing something, something powerful, something that killed bacteria. That something became penicillin, the world's first real antibiotic. At first, the discovery didn't create excitement, but years later, two scientists Howard Florey and Ernst Chain saw its potential. They extracted penicillin, purified it, and found it to be safe and effective for infections in humans. When World War II intensified, the British and American allies realized they desperately needed this new miracle. Penicillin was mass-produced. The factories worked by day-night. And by 1944, Enough penicillin was available to save thousands of wounded soldiers. For the first time, infection was no longer a certain death sentence. Lives were saved. Hope returned. And medicine stepped into a new era. After the war, the success of penicillin opened the floodgates. New antibiotics were discovered. Streptomycin, the first drug effective against tuberculosis, tetracyclines, erythromycin, vancomycin, and a handful of others. Surgeries became safer. Childbirth became less deadly. Diseases that once killed millions now became simple illnesses that could be treated in days. But then came the downside. With antibiotics widely available, people started using them carelessly. Pharmacists sold them without prescriptions. Doctors prescribed them even when they weren't needed people started the misuse of antibiotics. And slowly, silently, bacteria began to fight back. An antibiotic is supposed to kill bacteria. But when the dose is too low, or the antibiotic is used when not needed, some bacteria survive the attack. These survivors change themselves, adapt, or develop tricks to escape the drug. And once they learn this, they pass the skill to other bacteria and become stronger against the antibiotics. The medicine that once saved millions suddenly stops working. Today, we face one of the greatest threats of our time. People are again dying from infections, not because we don't have antibiotics, but because the bacteria have learned how to defeat them. The World Health Organization warns that if we don't act, drug-resistant infections could kill up to 10 million people every year by 2050, at a conference held by World Health Organization, Dr. Keiji Fukada addressed it as a global problem. Not a regional phenomena. This is not a phenomena occurring in just poor countries or developing countries or in rich countries or developed countries. This is something which is occurring in all countries in the world. Dr. Pritish Tosh of the Mayo Clinic, one of the world's leading infectious disease experts, explains how the misuse of antibiotics is quietly shaping a global health crisis. Uh, worsening issues of antibiotic-resistant bacteria, meaning that the antibiotics that we have uh, sometimes are not effective uh, against bacteria that are causing infection. And this has become a worsening problem to the point where occasionally we'll even see infections caused by bacteria where we wouldn't expect any antibiotics to work. 
And so a lot of this problem is related to antibiotic overuse and antibiotic misuse. And if you look at on the outpatient setting, where antibiotics are probably most misused, and that is in the treatment of upper respiratory illnesses, as most of which are viral and uh, would not get better uh, by using an antibacterial agent. The antibiotic resistance is accelerating so fast that we may soon face infections with no medicines left to treat them, slipping back into a pre-antibiotic age. So the question is, what can we do? Antimicrobial resistance, or AMR, is undermining healthcare globally, making many antibiotics and other medicines on which we depend less effective. Routine infections are becoming harder to treat, debilitating, or deadly. Every year, AMR contributes to nearly 5 million deaths, and without urgent action, that number will only grow. World AMR Awareness Week helps us spread the word about the concrete actions needed to tackle AMR. This include preventing infections, using the right medicines the right way, developing new antibiotics, and reducing the unnecessary use of antimicrobials in healthcare, agriculture, and food production. Stopping AMR is a shared responsibility. Let's work together to protect the medicines that protect us. Now, we don't have much time. We need to be mindful before using antibiotics. In the end, it's a war. A war between bacteria and humankind. And who will win?